we have been looking at how a demand curve, whether it's steep or flat, can give us some indication of elasticity or how sensitive consumers are to a change in price, right? Elastic says that if you change the price, the amount that consumers are willing and able to buy changes a lot. Whereas inelastic demand says that if the price changes, the amount that consumers are willing and able to buy changes a little. So a steep or a flat slope of the demand curve can give us some indication of elasticity. But elasticity is actually a continuum. And we have two extremes we want to consider. And then we can look at whether demand for an item is closer to one extreme or another. So we have on one end perfectly elastic demand. Perfectly elastic demand has an elasticity coefficient of infinity. So we have that infinity symbol there. So our elasticity coefficient, that's our number for elasticity. And we'll look in just a moment at some examples of elasticity coefficients and how to interpret them. But let's start with the extremes. If we have perfectly elastic demand, then what that means is a change in price. And so I'm just using this uh, triangle, that's delta, and delta means change. So it's a mathematical symbol, delta, that means change. A change in price causes an infinite change in quantity demanded. Well, what does that look like? That would be dropping the price a fraction of a penny and losing all your customers. So the change in quantity demanded is huge. It's infinitely large. So we can show that on a graph because if we change the price even a fraction, okay, so small of a fraction you can't even see it on the graph, that the change in quantity demanded is just infinitely big. Now, these are extremes. So are there any goods where if you change the price even a fraction, you'd lose all your customers? Okay, well, there's probably no goods that have perfectly elastic demand, but there are goods that if we change the price a little, it has a huge impact on the amount that customers are willing and able to buy, where customers are very sensitive to the price change. Now, let's look at the other extreme. So the other end of the continuum has an elasticity of demand or price elasticity equal to zero. In this case, you change the price and the amount that customers are willing and able to buy doesn't change at all. No change in quantity demanded. So if we were to look at that graphically, that would mean that we could take the price, okay, let's say you double the price, you quadruple the price, you make it a hundred times more. You change the price, and here we make the price go up, and notice that the quantity demanded didn't change at all. So are there goods that are perfectly inelastic, where no matter what the price is, the quantity demanded wouldn't change? Well, you can probably think of some goods that people are not very sensitive to a price change, things that people have to have to live. For example, insulin, right? Diabetics need insulin. And so what if insulin is more expensive? Twice as expensive, a hundred times more expensive. Well, really you're only buying what you need to start with and even though the price goes up, you still need it to live. So you're not very responsive to the change in price. You still get it anyway. The elasticity coefficient for insulin is about 0.01. So what does this elasticity coefficient mean? Well, we have a cutoff here with an elasticity coefficient of one. Anything between 1 and infinity is considered to be elastic demand. Anything between 0 and 1 is inelastic. 
To help us keep track of these extremes and the graphs associated with them, notice the perfectly inelastic demand looks like an I, and the perfectly elastic demand looks like an E. Okay. So then we can look at different products and we can start to arrange them according to their elasticity. Are they more elastic? Are they more inelastic? So let's look at two examples here. Let's think about cigarettes. So tell me, if the price of smokes were to double, what would happen to the amount you smoke? Would you smoke half as less, those of you who smoke? If the price of cigarettes were to fall, so instead of 20 bucks a pack, you're paying one penny a pack, would you smoke tons more? All of those who don't smoke, would you start? Well, how sensitive are you to a price change when it comes to cigarettes? So is demand more elastic or inelastic? If when the price changes, the amount you are willing and able to buy changes a lot, it's elastic, right? It's the rubber band. But if when the price changes, the amount you are willing and able to buy doesn't change very much, your demand is more inelastic. You're closer on this continuum to that perfectly inelastic demand. Well, cigarettes have an elasticity coefficient of 0.86. So what does that mean? Well, that means that they are more inelastic that we are less sensitive to a change in price. And in fact, the elasticity coefficient, that 0.86, we can interpret that because it means that a 1% decrease in price would cause quantity demanded to go up by 0.86%. Or you can go the other way. A 1% increase in price would cause quantity demanded to go down 0.86%. So we change the price and the amount that people are willing and able to buy changes a little. Let's look at another example. Movie tickets. Movie tickets have an elasticity coefficient of 3.41. So this 3.41 says that a ticket to the movie theater is what? More inelastic or elastic? It's greater than one, between one and infinity, so it's more elastic. And in fact, we can interpret that because a 1% increase in price would cause quantity demanded to decrease by how much? By 3.41%. So an elasticity coefficient of 3.41 says a 1% decrease in price would cause quantity demanded to go up 3.41%, or conversely, a 1% decrease in price causes quantity demanded to go up 3.41%, right? Law of demand says they go in opposite directions. So we can see then this elasticity coefficient number tells us how responsive people are to a change in price. When price changes, does the amount you're willing and able to buy change a lot or change a little?